suppose she'd be with you, Mrs. Hastings. Well, I'm hoping to keep her with me in New York for nearly a month. And I expect you gentlemen to give her a marvelous time. Yeah, oh, here she is, everybody. My niece from California, Mrs. Catherine Ward. Catherine, dear? I'll uh, start with Fred, then I can introduce you round the room. Of course. Uh, Mr. Tobin. How do you do? Mr. Granger. It's a pleasure, Mrs. Ward. And Mr. White. Welcome to New York. Thank you. My niece, Mrs. Ward. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, and where are Mrs. Tobin, Mrs. Granger, and Mrs. White? Nowhere. The poor darlings don't have any wives. Fred lost his Virginia just about the same time that you lost Richard. Ed and Arnold are bachelors. Oh. But not confirmed, of course. And Lou. Mm. You promised you would not do this. Promised what, darling? You know exactly Oh, what I you... want you to meet two very old friends of mine, oh. Mrs. Wimpleton and Mrs. Randolph. How do you do? Who is she, dear? My niece from California, dear. Who? My niece, dear. Oops. Mm. A strap. Oh. Uh, Aunt Lou, I'll need your help. Mm. Uh, excuse us, please, for a moment. <laughs> With you. Right, I could die of embarrassment. Oh, Dodson, darling, straps do break. No, yeah. no, no, my straps are fine. It's my bride that's shattered. Well, it looks like a mother-son convention in there. Oh. Do you know what you've done? You have herded every eligible male in New York City into that room. And for feminine companionship, you offer, well, five great-grandmothers and me. Now, what choice do they have? Well, some of the other ladies couldn't come just at the very last minute. Look at me. You didn't invite any other ladies, and you and I know it. Oh, Aunt Lou, I don't want to get married again. <laughs> Yes, well, we're seeing uh, West of Paradise. <laughs> yes, aren't we lucky? I understand the tickets are almost impossible to get. W well, she got them through a, a friend of the producers, you know. <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, I will. Goodbye, Mr. Tobin. Goodbye. Aunt Lou? Aunt Lou? You'd better hurry. It's getting late, you know. Well, darling, this is no time to be taking a beauty nap. Oh, Catherine, darling. What is it? Oh, I, I think it must be the flu. It, it just hit me. Oh, I, no. Oh, I feel, well, it doesn't matter how I, I... I called for the doctor, dear. You just run along. I'll do no such thing. You don't have a fever? No. But you will give me one if, after all, I've been through to get two tickets for West of Paradise. You miss it. Oh, well... Just sitting on the bed, staring at me. I'm sorry. But I can't just walk off and leave you. Oh, darling, quiet. This is New York. What you can't do is miss the hit of the season. Oh, now, the slip for the house tickets are on the desk. And I'll call up the box office and tell them that you're coming alone. I'll run along. <laughs> Row double M? Yes, it is. <laughs> Did I miss much? Uh, no. <laughs> but you will. <laughs> to laugh. <laughs> a man with a sense of humor. Refreshing. 
<laughs> oh, Aunt Lou, as long as you're going to matchmake, why don't you set me up with something like... Oh, dear. Of course. She has. She isn't sick at all. She gave her ticket to this gentleman. Oh, how embarrassing. She has no right to put me in the position of a man-crazy widow on the prowl. I thought he was overly friendly when he sat down. Well, I'll fix him. And Aunt Lou. <laughs> I love your laugh. Do you? I never cared for it much. I always wanted one of those musical, silvery ones, you know? <laughs> well, that it isn't. Excuse me, I guess... Oh, surely. I guess you might say it's sort of helpless. Helpless? Yeah. Oh, dear. Like you were coming apart at the seams and couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, may I introduce myself? Oh, must you? I mean, it's, it's so conventional. I prefer talking to strangers. Fine with me. How about drinking with strangers? Cute little bar next door. Well, I just thought you'd never ask. <laughs> what about exchanging first names and nicknames? Oh. You know that it'd still keep us strangers, but uh, cut down on the AUs. Oh, I don't know. I think it's better not to know anything. You don't know anything about me, do you? No, of course not. <laughs> but I don't know anything about you. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. I, I drink scotch mists. Getting to know you. Mm -hmm. Bartender. Two scotch mists. I think I know something else about you, too. Yes? What makes you laugh? <laughs> we did seem to laugh at the same things. After, we'll probably find out that we're very much alike. After? After the theater. You are going to invite me for a bite or a drink or a ride or something. Well, the thought had crossed my mind. Mm. But all that's pretty conventional. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, I suppose, but because we're strangers, if we just went out for an ice cream cone, it would have a certain shock value. I see. <laughs> Thank you. You're kind of nuts. If I weren't, I wouldn't be talking to you. I have an aunt who's really crazy. Who hasn't? <laughs> You're very beautiful. I can say that because I'm a painter. I say it professionally. Well, thank you. I don't care how you say it or why you say it, as long as you say it. <laughs> you really a painter? Yes. Instead of that ice cream cone, why don't you come up to my apartment and I'll uh, show you my painting. Oh, I'd love to. And again, I thought you'd never ask. You are nuts. No. I'm just a yes girl. Anything wrong with that? Not a thing. We have two more acts to go. Excuse me. Oh, surely. My place? Your place. Uh, however, uh, I came with some friends who don't realize just how unconventional I am. So uh, why don't I meet you there? Half an hour. Perfect. You leave first. Here's my car. Oh? Well, in case you get lost, just dial Custer's Last Stand. What? Custer's Last Stand. June 25th, 1876. June... The sixth month, 25, 1876. Oh, that's very clever. Well, thank you. <laughs> See you. Soon. <laughs> oh, I 
hate to do this. But matchmakers must be dealt with. And tomorrow, after I protest mildly, I'll let Aunt Lou set it up again. I like him. Oh, good morning, Aunt Lou. Oh, good morning, dear. I see you're feeling better. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, much better. I guess it was something I ate. <laughs> How was your evening? Fine. And the show? Funny. You just miss Broadway's current smash is merely funny. Well, Broadway's current smash wasn't the fun part of it. No. Mm -mm. No, a certain gentleman sat right down next to me in your seat. What was he like? Well, now, I hardly think it's necessary for me to describe him to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> what happened? Of course, the minute he sat down, I knew you'd plant it in there. Oh, he's such a nice man, from a fine family. He's only 42, and he's already made his first million. His first million? Mm hmm Painting? Painting? Mm-hmm. Well, he, he told me he was a painter. Oh, darling. Oh, you two did have fun. No, he, he's the president of his own insurance company. Oh, no. Oh, dear. In a way, I wish you really were a painter. Well, I suppose he wasn't any more honest with me than I was with him. What do you mean by that? Well, last night I decided to break you of the habit of throwing men in my path like an obstacle course. Kate, now, come on, come on. Tell me from the very beginning. He introduced himself. No, no, no. No introductions. I simply behaved as any first-rate, Main Street pickup. That's not a nice thing to say. After the theater, he suggested that we go directly to his apartment. She did? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened? Nothing. Because I stood him up. Really? Mm-hmm. How very interesting. Well, I guess it's those little suits he wears. You liked him. Mm. He was a great improvement over your Wall Street gang. I tell you, we're having roast beef for dinner. That's a good man's meal. I'll call him up and ask him to join us. Well, it's your roast beef. Not that he needs any more red blood. Red blood? I wonder if his mother knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid there's nothing to know. He was probably just acting up a storm like I was. And here I thought I'd found a real character. Huh. And recalling some of my dialogue last night, I can imagine what he's thinking about me. Oh, I see you've been shopping again. You like it? Lovely. Good. <laughs> There's our man, right on time. Let him in, dear, will you? Indeed. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Catherine, you're going to leave him there in the hall all the evening? Come in, Jeffrey. Thank you. How are you? Just fine, thank you, Mrs. Hastings. If Mother sends her regards. Oh, that's nice. Sit down, dear. Sit down. <clears throat> well, how did you enjoy the play last night, Mrs. Ward? It was fine. I mean, fine. It was very good. Oh, you! You were sitting on the other side of me. That's right. I tried to introduce myself several times, but you were occupied. <laughs> I was really quite surprised to hear from your aunt today. I didn't think you even noticed me. Oh, Mrs. Strap. Aunt Lou, uh, would you come and help me, please? Excuse us. Well, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Um, uh, uh, get yourself a drink, Jeffrey. Very 
wrong. Very. That's not he. What do you mean, that's not he? Of course it is. Oh, that is not the man that I carried on with at the theater last night. Well, uh, that one, Jeffrey, he was sitting on my right. Well, he never even opened his mouth. Do you mean to tell me that you let a perfect stranger pick you up in the theatre? Why, that's not done, dear. Not even in New York. Oh, well. The damage is already done now. There's no damage. And you know, I don't know one thing about him. I don't know his name, his address, his... his telephone number. Now, there was something about his telephone number. It had to do with, with an historical event, the date of it. Oh, why did I tear up his card? He gave it to me and I just threw it away. Down the full run. Down and down and down. Yeah, it's one of those three. Full run. July. 21st, 1862. Now, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, 7th. 7, 2, 1, 8, 2, 62. Right. Let's see. The right of Paul Revere. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jeffrey. Happy birthday. A heart of diamonds. Seventeen diamonds. Oh? This is our seventeenth date, you know. Now, that was very sweet of you. Well, it was your aunt's idea, really. Oh. She said that you were a bit on the sentimental side. Yes, I am a romanticist, I must admit. Well, now, don't you feel badly, Catherine. Most women are. <laughs> Even some men. Well, you know, started for the theater. Yes. You know, I'll say one thing for you, Catherine. You made me the best informed insurance man on the new plays. Oh? 17 dates, 17 plays. <laughs> I love the theater. You're just like a little girl. I think you like the crowds and the excitement as much as anything. Maybe more. <laughs> you really give the audience the once-over. Well, I love people. Do I come under the heading of people, Catherine? Well, of course. I think we get along very nicely. Yeah, I, we certainly do. <laughs> Catherine, mm -hmm. would you marry me? Well, it's after eight, Jeffrey. Uh, no, I, I didn't mean this evening. Oh, no, I know. But it, it's, uh, it's late, you know? <laughs> oh, of course. No, I'll ask you again. Yes, I, I mean, thank you. It's a perfect match. I, I couldn't be happier. You need him and he needs you. Nothing was settled, Aunt Lou. Well, grab him. Jeffrey is going places. Mm. He has a glorious future in business and politics. With an attractive wife by his side, he'll be governor. But I don't like politics. Oh, stop that, Catherine. You'll have a very rich life with Jeffrey. He's interested in the theater, travel, the arts. Mm -hmm. He has the finest collection of modern French impressionists in the city. Which his decorator bought and hung in his apartment. Oh, no, really, he's very nice. But, 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 but what? Oh, Catherine, really, you are too annoying. Well, I bet he doesn't even know the color of my eyes. Oh, rot. Hello. Good morning, Jeffrey. Yes. Yes, I saw our little stock was up this morning. Oh, yes, yes, she's here. Thank you. Good morning, Jeffrey. No, I haven't checked the stock market yet. Buy what? What did you say to buy, dear? Uh, Jeffrey, wait just a minute. What color are my eyes? Hmm. Uh, just a minute. Aunt Lou wants to talk to you for a minute. 
Jeffrey. Brownish. What stock did you say to buy? Custer's Steel. Oh, yes. Custer's Last Stand. That's it. Yes. Always wake up with one. June twenty fifth, eighteen seventy six. June sixth. What? Oh, I bet that I have to hang up, dear. Goodbye. Thank you. Six, twenty, five, eighteen, seventy, six. What are you dialing? Custer's last band. Have you gone completely balmy? Hello. Uh, to whom am I speaking? Well, what took you so long? <sighs> you know who this is? Sure. My yes girl has said no. You're pretty conventional after all. Terribly. I was just uh, talking big that night. I figured as much. What color are my eyes? Well, when I first looked down at you, they were blue, blue. Clear, five for a penny, marble blue. Yes. Well, when the lights in the theater dimmed, they turned to peacock. Shooting emerald green sparks like two pieces of good jewelry. Married. Nope. Are you? Nope. Are you really a portrait painter? Yes, but <laughs> I have a little income. Mm-hmm. Which you no doubt handle very well. Nope. Can't add two and two. I've got a little man chained to the desk for all that sort of rot. Would you like to see uh, West of Paradise? Then you're not mad? Mad? Yes, because I stood you up. Oh, no. In fact, that's one of the things I found most intriguing about you. Is that so? Mm hmm. I repeat the offer. Would you like to see West of Paradise? I saw it. Sitting right next to you, if you recall. Oh, I recall vividly sitting next to you. So vividly that I don't know what happened on the stage. Did the boy get the girl? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure either. Perhaps we had better give it another try. <laughs> Excuse me, would you mind removing your hat? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I can't. It's nailed on. Oh. She says it's nailed on. Shall we change seats with them? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that better, dear? Mm -hmm. 